So find V and I in the circuit. Okay, we will do it using nodal analysis. So the first step that we need to do is to label the nodes, right? Label the nodes. Okay, but first let's set our reference node, which is the bottommost node here. Let's assume that this is our ground. So the voltage here will be zero. And then let's name this node here as node V1. And then this node here as node V2. Okay, so we need to find out what is V1 and then what is V2. Okay, the second one will be assume the current's direction. Assume the current's direction okay let's see let's assume this is going to the right and this one going down this one going to the right and this is going down and this is going down okay but we have some a problem here not some just one we cannot find out what is this current here because this is a voltage source. We don't have a tools like Ohm's law, right? So we need to do is to assume that this V1 and V2 is a single big node. So let's combine that nodes. So V1 and V2 into a single super node. Here that we draw this one. So this is our super node, right? And because this is the only node in the circuit, we need to do KCLs at that node. So the third step is do KCL at each node. Because we only have one so big super node, we only do KCL at that nodes here. KCL at the super node. Okay, KCL said the sum of the current that goes in will equal to the sum of the current that goes out. Okay. There is only one current that is going in, which is this current here. But first, we know that this is 14 volt from the ground. So this will be 14. And we can calculate this current using Ohm's law. The node where the current came from, that will be 14. And then minus where the current is going to. So this is V1. But this is a voltage to get the current. We divide it by the resistance between them, which is 4. Good. And this is the only current that goes in. So we put the equal sign and move on to the currents that goes out. This one is going out. And again, we can calculate it using Ohm's law. The node where the current came from, that will be V1. And then the node where the current is going to, it is going here. And that node is 0. So V1 minus 0 divided by the resistance between them, that will be 3. Good. And then this current is going out from the super node. And again, we can play the same game. The currents came from V2 here. So we'll have V2. And the currents goes here here to the ground so we'll have zero divided by the resistance between them so we will have two ohm and again we do it for one more branch here so we will have the current comes from v2 and it goes into zero so we will have v2 minus zero and that will be divided by six good we can now multiply both sides by 12. 4 and 12 will cancel into 3. And 14 multiplied by 3 is 42, right? 
and then minus 3v1 here okay and then 3 and 12 will cancel into 4 then 4 multiplied by v1 so i will have 4 v1 good and then 2 and 12 will cancel into 6 so we will have 6 v2 and then 6 and 12 will cancel into 2 so we will have plus 2 v2 good now let's simplify things 4 plus 3 is 7 so we will have 7 v1 and then plus 6 plus 2 is 8 8 v2 and on the other side we will have 42 i think nothing further that we can do from here we have equation But here we have two equation, one equation, but with two variables, right? So we will have P1 and P2 here, P1 and P2 in the equation one. We need one more equation to be able to solve this. So we need the four steps, the four steps look inside the super node. Okay why we need to look inside the super node because we have this voltage source here six volt what does this six volt mean this six volt is actually the difference between the positive node and the negative node here negative terminal so here we will have v2 minus v1 so let's write that so we'll have v2 minus v1 that will equal to the voltage source between them, which is that 6. Okay, and let's rearrange this. So we'll have minus V1 and then plus V2. And that will equal to 6. And this is equation number 2. And now we have two equations with two variables. This is V1, V2 and this is for equation number two from equation number one and equation number two we should be able to solve for v1 and v2 right so what is v1 and what is v2 okay the idea is for the circuit analysis class usually we need we need to bring calculator to the class. So the fastest way to do this in circuit analysis class is by using calculator. You can use another method like substitution or elimination or Kramer's method, but that will take a very long time. Okay, let's do this using calculator. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is we set up our calculator here and equation solver is number five. Okay, and we have two variables which is number one here so what we need to do is just to plug in the coefficients of equation number one and equation number two so we will have seven as the coefficient of v1 in the first equation and then eight and then the constant term is 42 good and then here for equation number two we have the coefficient of v1 is minus one the coefficient of v2 is 1 and the constant term is 6 and now we will have the x and y value the x value will be minus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4 and the unit will be in four. and then what is the other value the y value is 5.6 5.6 Okay, so this is the step number five, which, which is solve the equations. Solve one and two. But we have to remember that the question is asking us not about V1 and V2, but P and I. So remember, you have to follow the direction of the problem. Uh, answer the question.
Okay, what is the question as us? It is asking about this V here. But this V is the difference between V1 and the ground here. So V is equal to V1 minus 0. So that will be equal to V1. And that is minus 0 0.44. Or we can also rewrite this as minus 400 millivolt right just change the unit good this is the first answer for this question and then the second one i think we need to find out the i yeah what is the i i is here we can calculate that using Ohm's law so we will have v2 then minus zero divided by so V2 minus 0 is just V2 and we know that is 5.6 divided by 2. And so we will have I is equal to this, which is 2.8. The unit will be in milli, not milli ampere. The unit will be in ampere. And that is the second one. So here is the I and here is the V. And I think that's all for this problem. Hopefully, I did not make any mistakes. We already have P and I. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.